Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Picture with your friendly neighborhood host. It is me, Cardi. Today we are talking specifically about websites. And the question I'm asking you, does your website suck? Does your photography website lack what it should have? I'm sure it does. I'm actually probably pretty sure it does. Or even worse, it doesn't exist yet. You know, which is way worse. No website. A website's often a photographer's first dive into the world of design and also the first attempt beyond social media for actually putting yourself out there as a photographer, Welcome. a website. That's what we do first. Welcome, Coco Blossoms. And also, Welcome, my man, Mike Stimmatzi. Welcome, my guy, our first Welcome. member who became a member during yeah, a couple minutes before I went live. Welcome, Mike. Thanks for becoming a member, my guy. I appreciate you. You get the smoke. All right. So today we're going to teach. I'm going to teach you some things. Today we're going to get a little bit into industry standards and some things about industry standards. Industry standards are the minimum level of execution that you have to achieve in order to be seen as understanding the industry. It's nearly impossible to get hired by decision makers if your website doesn't have the 15 things on this list that I'm about to talk about working seamlessly. You may think that your website is a great way to stand out. You got to think again. Your spectacular work displayed in an industry standard way focused on searchable niches that make sense is the way forward. Your work is what has to stand out, not that cool way of showcasing your work on your website. If you want your bounce rate not to be 100%, if you don't even know what bounce rate is, you got to pay attention to this episode. Get your notebook and a pen and do your best to keep up because I'm going to be hitting you with 15 things that every website has to have with examples and why. First, first off, I'd only choose two ways to make a website in 2024 two ways number one i would use the behance adobe portfolio system which is what i do if you have creative cloud if you pay for photoshop and lightroom then you have creative cloud and therefore you get adobe portfolio for free adobe portfolio is by far, I believe the fastest and freest way because you're already paying, you're already paying for Creative Cloud. I use Adobe Portfolio to manage my two websites and Adobe Portfolio is so simple. Right now, by the way, my perspective of my site is it sucks because I haven't done an update because I've been so insanely busy with this YouTube channel. And the projects that I do are so specific. It's like, but it's not really an excuse. I need to update so much of my website and it's super easy to do. You just go into the back end of your Adobe portfolio and you can see I have my main portfolio. I have my cannabis portfolio under Adobe portfolio as well as a test site. And I build a test site to just see layout, just to see if I want to change the template, just to work out problems and buffers that like might not be working with my main site. I test it on my back end on the test site, and then I adopt those things that I learn and I move them over to the main site. So right now, this is the back end for my site, and it's so simple to rearrange my main portfolio, to rearrange the order in which my navigation shows, and to use all the real estate of the frame. 
that's the thing about websites nowadays is they have to be dynamic. You can see how you can size my website to any size and it's always going to use all the page. Now, that's a super simple setting that you do with the overall background container of your website. You go to your website container and you see it says the content takes up 100% of the frame. There's no left margin, no right margin. And my maximum width, you see here, my maximum width is zero. So if I set my maximum width to anything, imagine now, back in the day, you would set your maximum width to 1000 pixels. As soon as I do that, you'll see the width of my website changes. Now it no longer, it doesn't matter what I do, it's not going to be wider than a thousand pixels. So if you have a max width set on your website, that's the reason that your pictures aren't going all the way to the edges. Set that for nothing. Delete it and you'll see your pictures go to the edge of the frame. That Adobe Portfolio is so easy to use, but you have to do the work. You got to spend the time to make sure that your portfolio is customized the way that it needs to be. Oh, appreciate you, Chris F. Thank you, my guy. All right. So let's get into the second. Oh, yeah. Also, let's I'm not even finished as to why you use Adobe Portfolio. Let's go to Behance and realize that Behance is the place that art directors go to in order to find photographers. So I sign in with my Adobe Creative Cloud login. And now you can see my portfolio or my Behance profile is literally exactly the same as my website. All the work that is on Behance is also on my website, shown in a very, very similar way. So when an art director is searching in Toronto for, or searching Toronto photographer, and they want editorial and slash portraits, they search in Behance, and they're gonna see Steve Cardi. They're also going to see Julie because Julie's also an editorial portrait photographer. And my stories are going to come up in here. And once they click one of my stories, they're going to get access to number one, my photography. But number two, they're also going to get access to my profile. And all they need to do is go back here, click Steve Cardi. And now they're on my profile. It says Toronto, Canada my bio here and there's an ex there's examples of my work and they can go directly to my portfolio so behance is how you get on the wheel and using adobe portfolio and using that to maintain your portfolio and your website it just it's like an easy system so that's the first way that i would make a website the second way the second way that i would make a website is using Squarespace. Now you hear photographers on every channel. Hey, this was brought to you by Squarespace. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. You hear that so often and you hear that more often, not, you don't hear that any more often than uh, with Peter McKinnon. Peter McKinnon uses Squarespace. Peter McKinnon early was sponsored by Squarespace, but Peter McKinnon, and, and just to prove to you that Peter McKinnon is a YouTuber more so than a photographer, the quickest way to know that is just go to PeterMcKinnon.com. If you go to PeterMcKinnon.com, you'll see a self-portrait. You'll see Lightroom presets. You'll see limited edition prints, which he sells for shop prints. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's a few more. There's six now. And then motion graphics and his clothing and his YouTube channel. There's no photography. There's literally no photography 
on his website. He makes money from people watching his videos and selling presets. So, um, but if you are trying to sell goods on your website, I'll give you another good example of somebody who uses Squarespace, Pascal Shirley, which I'm going to talk about in a second as an incredible example of a photographer. I mean, his website right now is, it's very, it's taking a long time to load. So let's, uh, load. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the things when you have too many images on your website, it takes a long time for that page to load. But Pascal Shirley is using Squarespace. Now, although you do have the ability to sell your presets and your motion graphic settings and all that stuff on Squarespace, you can see that Pascal isn't doing that on his website. He's pretty much just showcasing his photography. And although all of these galleries seem to load at once, which makes it, and again, this is, although I do love his layout, I have fiber. I have like the fastest internet, like 150 megabytes down, and it takes that long for his photos to load that although the photography is so great and it's worth the wait the layout of his site the simplicity it's all worth the wait how long it takes to nav is not how long it should take for your site to load your site should load quite snappy and we're going to get into that in a second so <clears throat> squarespace is a paid service where you're paying monthly to host your website if you want to sell one thing two things three things like <clears throat> they bill you for what you want to sell but you can make beautiful websites with squarespace this is another squarespace website and also loads much faster so it does prove that it's all in how how big your images are not big in size but how big in file size which determines how fast your images load so um yes optimizing each image for being big meaning you click it and it's nice a nice size but also loads quickly is super important and you can see you can just fly through this website all right, so let's get into the 15 things. Again, whatever profile, other website pro uh, platform you're thinking about, Squarespace, yes. Adobe Portfolio, yes. But if you're thinking Wix, if you're thinking, or WordPress, like <laughs> Wix, no. It's, a f it, like it's free, but it's just, it's so bad and there's so few templates and it's so impossible to make your stuff good and also there's no discoverability or attachment to be hands squarespace costs money but it's so easy to use and so easy to lay out your website so many different ways so those are the only two i'm going to recommend you can ask me a question about any other ones that you might be thinking about or using but my answer is probably going to be use behance or squarespace just because squarespace is an industry standard and adobe portfolio is an industry standard so um, all right. Yeah. WordPress is too hard to use and, um, time consuming. And you also need a designer to make a WordPress site. All right. So the number one thing that you have to do in order to make your website sing is embrace simplicity. Simplicity is the cornerstone to a successful website. The cornerstone. You can't expect to have an incredible website without the look and feel of it being simple. By focusing on the essentials and el eliminating all unnecessary clutter, visitors can literally navigate your site so easily. They can find the information they need and they can enjoy stunning photography without distractions. Remember, simplicity doesn't mean sacrificing creativity. It's about presenting your art in a way New that member. captivates and resonates with your audience. 
My man Freddy just gifted 10 memberships. Freddy, you are absolutely crazy. Freddy, new member. thank you. The new members are about to go ludicrous for the next several. Hey, where's my smoke machine? New, new member. member. Smoke machine is warming up, Freddy. Everybody who just got a new membership, that is courtesy of Freddy. He just gifted new ten. member. Holy moly, Freddy spending over fifty dollars of his hard-earned money to make sure that all of you people have um, access new member. to chat twenty-four-seven and access to submitting photos. Thank you so much, Freddy. That's so 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 good of you. Appreciate you, Freddy. You're a good dude. Thank you, man. All right, let's get back into new member. websites. So simplicity, simplicity. You can see simplicity doesn't mean sacrificing creativity. It's about presenting your art in a way that captivates and resonates with your audience. It's a streamlined approach to delivering your photography. And this is just one. I'm gonna show you another incredibly simple site that I really loved, Nadav Kander. Let's look at Nadav's portraits. Super, super simple layout. Laid out in project form, The only issue with, um, oh, you click the picture to advance. There is no arrow navigation on Nadav's website. You need the arrows to be able to navigate left and right with your fingers, but Nadav has it so you click on either the left side of the photo to go back or the right side of the photo to go forward. Navigation arrows is recommended, but again, a very simple, simple, clean, beautiful website where the work is what's featured. It's not laid out in any profound way. He's giving you lots of space in between the photos so you can really take them in. And the work is very deep and compelling. This is Nadav Kander as far as simplicity of design. And obviously you can click any one of these photos. Funny enough here, um, you can click anywhere on this side of the frame. This is beautiful photography, beautifully clean, elegant website. Nice transition between the photos. It's beautiful. Nadav Kander is another Super simple, easy to navigate website. All right, let's get into number two, optimized navigation. That's the second very important thing that you have to have winning for you with your website. Let's look at Jeff Lipsky and let's look at optimized navigation overview, which is where we are. And it's telling us that we're in the overview section because it's got an arrow and it highlights it a different color. And you get a great overview of his work. This is the portfolio. Jeff Lipsky, super simple, easy to nab, super fast to scroll through it. You see a picture you like, it opens instantly. You can use arrows to nav and it navs super fast. You push the escape bar or Yes, you push the escape key. No, you actually have to go back to overview once you enter into gallery mode. With Adobe Portfolio, you just push the escape key and it gets you back to where you were. Um, but galleries loading super quickly, super quickly. This is the, the level of quickness that your galleries have to load this fast this fast super super easy and simple navigation fast loading so very simple overview personal projects 
Portraits, lifestyle, covers, advertising, and other personal projects, fathers and sons. Editorial, all of his magazine work. On set, there's got to be behind the scenes, right? So it's all pictures of Jeff, who's on the left here, working. He's got a whole category of behind the scenes photography, which is so clever. It really shows how fun he is to work with. How incredible is this? Having a whole category of behind the scenes. Super smart. And video. A whole category of the video work that he does, which here is probably um, a reel. And then about contact and find him on Instagram, which is going to open his Instagram account. Super, super beautiful, clean navigation. That's the second shooter that I'm going to share. And the second point, which is optimize your navigation. Just a couple of points on navigation. Welcome. Welcome, Tomas. A couple of points on navigation. Limit the number of menu items to provide a clear and straightforward user experience. Ensure that your menu is easily accessible, either on the top or the left side of your website, and that it remains consistent no matter what category that you're on. Also, when you have a logo, make sure that wherever you are, if you click the logo, it takes you back to the home screen. That is a thoughtful thing that everybody needs to do. It doesn't matter where you are on any spot in any photo. If you click the logo, it brings you back to the home screen. And also clear calls to action. Intuitive con controls when it comes to your navigation, which is like I mentioned, the forward and arrow buttons. And when you use the forward and arrow buttons, you can see this comes up, which is telling you click here in order to get, you see these, that's telling you to click here to get back to the thumbnails. And now you're back at the thumbnail. So thoughtful navigation clear calls to action and intuitive controls with easy access to the most important parts of your website, like the contact page. All right, that's clear calls to action, important navigation. All right, so optimize your navigation. So number three, create an effective contact page. Have an effective contact page, not just like a contact page, but an effective contact page. This is my contact page. My contact page has Steve Cardi Photographer, my email address, my phone number, my address, and it says, I'm available for projects big or small in Toronto or in exotic locations with passports involved. Drop me a line or send me an email for an instant response. I hate contact forms, so I'll never subject you to one. And I love DMs, phone calls, and text messages. Turning good ideas into reality is my thing. Let's talk. You can schedule an online meeting to discuss your project using the button below, which is right here. Schedule a 15 minute online meeting. And if you'd rather discuss via email or phone, send me an email for a quick reply. And then of course, a photo of me working and testimonials. I also go a little bit further where I have on the footer of every spot on my website, if you make it to the footer, my contact information is on the footer of every page. So it makes it super easy to find my contact information, having an effective contact page. And again, I hate forms, but you gotta predominantly display your contact information including a footer on every page to encourage engagement. If you have a, a contact form, simplify the contact form to remove any barriers between you and your potential clients. By making it easier for visitors to reach out to you, you open the door to exciting collaborations, inquiries, and valuable feedback.
I'm going to show you if you're going to have a form on your website instead of an email address, you've got to do it like this. Jay Maisel has the coolest form. Questions about licensing, workshops, or anything else should be directed to the studio or call this number. You click studio and it opens an email program and automatically sends an email to Jay Maisel Studio. So that is one way to have a form where that you can just click here and it'll send an email or join the join the list which is super smart now name email your subject matter purchasing prints licensing inquiry general question or feedback this is the way to do a form so you know why someone's emailing you right here if you're not doing a form with the drop down subject matter, just have people send you an email. The way that I do my contact form is you just click here and it sends me an email. You click here, it sends me an email, or you can click here to book a 15 minute Zoom chat with me. I make it super easy. So if you're gonna do a form, do it that way with the drop down. All right. Number four is utilizing the power of blogging. Your blog, and I'm not talking about necessarily your blog attached to your website, although your blog attached to your website is an amazing way for SEO if you're consistent, if you write weekly, bi-weekly. But what happens most of the time is a photographer has a blog on their website and guess what? They don't do anything to it because there's no accountability. When you have a blog just on your website, when you post to it, nobody knows. No one's notified unless they're going there to check regularly, which is why I do it this way. And the reason that I do it this way is because I watched a video from a creator named Lucy Lumen. And Lucy Lumen was talking about this blog that she has, and she was talking about it on her YouTube channel. And I checked this blog and I was like, huh, it's very interesting. This is a photographer who's a film photographer who's using writing. Interesting. And I'd wanted to start a blog, but my thoughts was I would have it here on my website. And just down here, you click blog and go to a blog page. But doing it the way that I do it, which is basically adopting what Lucy is doing with my own Substack, I started a life behind the camera. And a life behind the camera, let me just go to, yes, please leave this page. A life behind the camera is my weekly blog where it's like a partner to my YouTube channel. I write here every Saturday and I've been doing this for literally 48 weeks in a row. It's such a thing and it makes me so happy to not only share my photography but share my thoughts on professional photography getting into the market and you know it, it's just it's a way for me to see like if people love a blog post i'll often turn it into a video if people love a video i'll often convert it into a blog post but my blog is very niche to Photographer education for emerging professional photographers. That's what I talk about here on my channel and this is what I talk about on my blog. So if you're not subscribed to A Life Behind the Camera, subscribe. But moreover, you should be doing it yourself and you don't have to be doing pro photography education like I am. You could be doing it for showcasing your road along trying to get published or trying to get hired for the first time or trying to get to whatever that level is. Once you create it, on Substack, the thing that happens here that's different is it gets emailed out to everybody every time I post. So I can choose to not do that, but why would I? I email my I email to a mailing list and if I look at my stats, I can see that this Email is where I'm getting a majority of my views, but people are going there directly. People are also finding me through the Substack app. 
People are also finding me through YouTube and going to my Substack. And also people are finding me through Substack.com plus all the people who recommend me. So I'm able to track my stats. I'm able to track my subscriber growth. And I started literally with nobody. I started and I'm very open with my stats. I started with eight people on my list and I'm now to over a thousand people just from consistency and I email the post out to people, not just depending on them coming to my website. People like these emails, they like that inspiration every Saturday and they subscribe for more. So blogging is what you have to do and it's a canvas for storytelling. You can showcase your best work, you can share behind the scenes, you can engage your audience with compelling narratives. It not only showcases your talent, but it creates a personal connection with your readers. And that trust and rapport leads to repeat visits as your audience awaits your latest updates. Additionally, search engines love fresh content. So blogging posts visibility and helps you reach a wider audience. The funny thing that I do with my blog is I do like reverse engineering, meaning my blog is what I send out to everybody. But if you look at the header, you click podcast, it takes you to my YouTube channel. You click portfolio, it takes you to my website. You click mentorship, it takes you to my website. You click YouTube, it still takes you to my YouTube channel. I sell prints and you, you click the prints and it takes you to my Etsy store. Like it, it, it's, it's kind of genius. Like I have all of those links on the top of my blog. So each time I get sent, I send out, people can easily find me. People can easily find my YouTube channel. People can easily find my portfolio. So utilize the power of blogging. And I require, I, I suggest doing it Welcome. with Substack. Welcome Anton. I, I suggest doing it with Substack. It's just smarter, better and faster growth. The next thing, very important, is leveraging analytics. This is number five. Once you have a website, data is your ally when it comes to understanding your website's performance and audience behavior. Using tools like Google Analytics, like I use, Provide valuable insights into where your visitors are coming from, what your most popular content is, what your traffic sources are, and the demographics information. You can deep dive on so many reports, how you acquired your clients, how long they stay there. But all this is useless information if you're not using it. And it's even more useless information if you don't have a website to actually be tracking. You can use this data to make informed decisions. You can improve your navigation based on bounce rates. And what bounce rate is, is how many people come to your website and then leave. Leave instantly without staying. That is what your bounce rate is. So trying to find a way to have a super low bounce rate is super important when it comes to your website but you won't know that unless you're leveraging and learning from your analytics you can be refining your strategy strategies and inevitably elevating your website's impact i used to have a masthead on my website which was just a full page image but i found when i had just a full page image People were leaving. They weren't staying and clicking and going into the website. So that created a higher bounce rate. I also realized with my website, when I had my categories like this, where they could just scroll and see endless photos, click any picture, see that picture full screen, click escape and go back. Once I set my portfolio like this, where they could just use arrows, go all the way or click up here in the in the top click that X and go back when I set my categories like this I realized that people look through my categories and spent way more time on my website because of that information that I've learned I've also learned that categories like this my editorial portraits which are thumbnails for full stories meaning each one of these you have to click 
you go in, you see the photos, and then you have to exit to now see the next one. Categories like this, they don't do as well. So I'm switching all of my categories from looking like this to where you have to click into them and then click out of them to categories where you literally just need to scroll and you see everything when you click in easy to nav and click out so i'm changing all my categories that way based on the information that i learned from my analytics so analytics are super super important and help you learn how to progress and grow your website and by the way your website is never finished it's never web it's never finished and it's never good it doesn't matter how good or how much it's actually getting work for you it's constantly in evolution and you're constantly rolling and adapting with new industry standards as they appear so Adobe Portfolio was not an industry standard five years ago, but now it's an industry standard. So that's leveraging analytics. Next, craft a captivating about me page. Your about me page is an incredible opportunity. Your about me page is an opportunity to showcase the person behind the lens and establish a personal connection with your audience. Share your journey, your passions, and your unique perspective as a photographer. Accompany your bio with a captivating self-portrait or an engaging video. Strive to be authentic and transparent, and as know that this fosters a genuine bond with your visitors and builds trust in your brand. This is Miles Aldridge About Me page, and I'm going to show you a couple of incredibly powerful about me pages you can see when you have an about me page without a photo how regardless how absolutely captivating and mind-blowing this photographer's work is you can see when you go to the about me page and not see a photo of the photographer it feels lacking and when you go to the contact page and not see a photo of the photographer working it feels lacking and again this is an incredible photographer but you want to see them yes or yes so have an amazing photo on your about me page better still have a video this is my about me page and i have a video that treat everybody like a superstar my, treat everybody like a superstar is the first line of that bit like if you click that you're going to watch that video and it has my approach and highlights of my published work and clients. And of course, my contact information is on the footer. So I use space, pack with a big, funny, interesting self-portrait, as well as video that grabs you, that pulls you to my YouTube channel, that hears you hear me speak about photography, why I do it, how passionate I am, you see me working, it, it's all to just create that connection with you and that potential client that hasn't yet reached out to you, but they want to. And Pascal Shirley, look at Pascal Shirley's About Me page and how that photo of him looking at a photography book at his desk with his dog and testimonials awards, solo exhibitions, select group exhibitions. Like he's included his CV here. So again, I feel like he could be utilizing space better. This really looks great on a phone, but um, the amount of wasted space that we have here, I would love to see other photos or other text blocks. And when you're scrolling down here and you're seeing I would love to see 
text block, like make it more like a newspaper. I think that that, like how we lay out our text blocks, it, it's so important to, to lay out our space better, to use more of the space and lay it out in a creative way. All right, that is create a captivating about me page. Number seven, unique design. Your website is a reflection of your brand and identity. This is Rankin and Rankin is one of my absolute favorite photographers. You see, join our mailing list. A mailing list, I'm gonna get into this in a second, but it is so absolutely important to have. This is Rankin. And if you click his name, it'll open up. I think, oh, the nav is over here. Yes. Let's look at work. Portraits one, portraits two, covers, beauty. Let's look at portraits one. We're clicking a lot of different things in order to just get to here, which is simple nav across the top and simple click a picture, use the arrows to navigate to the next and click the X to close it. Like for me, his site could start here. It doesn't need to have the, this page isn't, necessary although the full screen images de definitely sets you up for what you're about to see but this up here this hamburger welcome. menu is so small that you don't welcome van rick you don't know that you have to click this in order to unlock work and then when you're here um giving me this again I don't need to get this again. I would say just default to portraits because that's the first one. And then all the rest are up here. So simplifying, and I mean, this is one of the world's most famous photographers and one of my favorite photographers, but you can see how making people do too many clicks before they get into the actual goods is defeating. You know, when I go, when you go, to stevecardi.com and you go to my site, it's just, you just get right to the work. The only thing that I'm going to try to do is do the sticky navigation. So as you're scrolling, the navigation stays on the side. I have to figure out a way to do that. Um, all right, so unique design. Andrea Claren. Let's look at Andrea Claren's unique design. Single. Again, very much like Rankin, very much almost like Rankin identically. And you can see it's, you can see this photographer literally has taken Rankin's site almost exactly. And again, this is, this is something not to do. Like, I mean, it's hard to have a complete unique website. This is Rankin's website. This is Andrea Claren's website. This is her hamburger menu. This is Rankin's hamburger menu. So when you're at the point where you're just straight ripping someone else's website off, this is the first click on the hamburger menu on his, this is the first click on the hamburger menu on her. It just goes into the work. So she's removed one extra step, but is basically using either his template or his website exactly. But different photographer, different work. Huh, okay. So unique design <laughs> is what we're trying to do, which again is different, difficult. Your website design is a reflection of your brand identity. 
So having a tailor-made look that sets you apart from generic templates, it elevates your photography to a professional level. But there is an industry standard that you kind of have to understand. Customization allows you to infuse your personality and artistic vision into the elements, but know that there are color schemes, there's typography, there's things that like your website has to be black, white, or gray, because that's like the industry standard. This horizontal scroll works very well on a phone, but horizontal scroll on a big screen like this becomes a lot. It, again, it's like you have to have it working for both mobile and desktop. For me, this, although I do love the look of this site, the horizontal scroll you can see is set for the iPhone mentality, where when you're looking at it on a website, you want it to feel more like a magazine, which is rarely a horizontal scroll. So again, which is why I'm not, I'm dropping the horizontal scroll for my entire site. Okay, so you have to have a unique design, but at the same point, you have to walk that line between unique design and functionality. And functionality is more important than your unique design. Making it so people see the work quickly without making them have to jump through another hoop, another hoop, another hoop, another hoop to get it. You can see even watching me navigate that way is incredibly frustrating. All right, let's get into number eight, which is prioritizing speed and reliability with your website. Reliability. Why do I use Adobe Portfolio? Re reliability. Why do people use Squarespace? Re reliable. It's always up. It's not... Your website's not down because your host or your your hosting company is down or something. It's just 100% uptime and speed. Look at how fast you size website loads and it loads beautifully. It loads in such a way that it only loads as you see it. So therefore, when you go to a, when you have so many photos to scroll and you're going through categories, this website loads in rows. So you see the work and you can start looking at the first picture right away. Arrows navigate you back. And of course the X up here, and this isn't copying. It's because it's industry standard. Instead of hitting the X, you can also push the escape key. So you can literally navigate the website using arrows and the escape key. It's super, super simple. And your website also has to be this simple. Look at how beautiful this work is and look at how quickly you get to access it. There's no waiting. Having a fast, functional website is the way to go. Look at how fast I'm flying through this category. You can fly through websites when they are properly optimized. Yes or yes. There's no waiting. And again, I have 150 megabytes down and 150 megabytes up. I have multiple browser windows open and the website is loading like... So that's how your website has to load. It has to be optimized. That's Usai showing you quickie, quickie, quickie. Let's look at another one. This is Marion Vivica, Viva, Vivicano. Mariano Vivicano. Instantly loads. You can go through this way and look at what he has here on his homepage, or you can go up here to the menu. And in here, he's not showing you the photos unless you roll over. So it makes it load super quickly. You're only seeing the photos when you roll over. And then the photos load super fast. So having super clever loading 
and super clever navigation and a fast loading website. Oh, I have to go here, view project. Fast loading. Click and drag to move. Interesting. This now I don't love. All right. Okay, related content. Yeah, the click and drag to move is, is I mean, you get to see the picture super big, but the click and drag to move to me is silly. I just want to see this in a gallery. It's making it a little bit more complicated, I think, than it needs to be. But again, um, speed and reliability. Forget about that second sight. Think only you sigh. <laughs> Think only you sigh when it comes to speed and reliability. Um, yes. And again, his contact, all his agents. Hey, that's my agent too, by the way. Anne Marie, that's my syndication agent at Getty. Let's go, you sigh. All right. So, speed and reliability. By prioritizing speed and reliability, you show your audience that you value their time and attention. When your website performs flawlessly without frustrating delays, you're literally guaranteeing a smooth and enjoyable browsing experience. So you have to do that. So next one, SEO. This is number nine, master SEO strategies. Search engine optimization is the key to increasing your website's visibility in search engine results. Welcome. Hey, welcome, Demetrius. Appreciate you being here. So imagine, optimize your on-site content with relevant keywords, meta descriptions, and image captions to make it easier for search engines to understand and rank your website. So um, you can also involve, have backlinks, which is other websites mentioning you and blah, 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 which signals to search engines that your content is valuable. I'm not saying hire an SEO person, but you do have to understand SEO practices and that's how you, that's how you gain organic traffic. I'm going to show you SEO, like just to give you an idea as to how I'm optimized for SEO. If you go to google.com and, um, and you type editorial portraits, Toronto, which is what I shoot and hit enter, you see right here, Steve Cardi photographer, Toronto photographer, Steve Cardi. So I'm listed second out of 69 million entries. So editorial portraits is what I do. So if you type editorial portraits, Toronto, if you type Toronto urban photographer headshots, or things like this, like you have to have like your moniker. What is it that you shoot? For me, I'm a Toronto photographer and I shoot editorial. So if you type Toronto photographer editorial, you're gonna get me. So that's where I'm optimized and I use SEO to do that. If you wanna know exactly how I become first um, on the editorial photographer, Toronto photographer editorial moniker. And again, by the way, this is why I shoot for magazines like once a month. It's why magazines from all over the world, when they have a subject here in Toronto, I get the call to shoot that portrait. So it's because my website is optimized for people who don't know my name to find me. And there is a very specific secret and because you've been watching me for 54 minutes, yeah, I'm feeling frisky today. I'm gonna let you in on how my SEO is so crazy. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, why not? I got nothing to hide because again, you're only in competition with yourself. You're not in competition with me. So I'm not worried, <laughs> that's why I'm gonna show you. Okay, look, we're in the back end of my website. Settings. Um, okay, yes, custom domain name, homepage, 
analytics. Yes, my Google anal analytics. Search optimization. <gasps> ding, ding. Okay, I'm gonna show you a secret. Meta description, portfolio website for Toronto-based photographer, blah, 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 right? This, and when you go to editorial portraits, Toronto, and you get Steve Cardi, what does it say here? Portfolio website for Toronto photographer, Steve Cardi. So the description is your website description, which you see here, which is the meta description. Your website title is when you go to stevecardi.com and you see how up here, this is the title of my website, Toronto Photographer Steve Cardi. Guess what you're starting to see next? Well, you can't see it next, but the name of my website, the title of my website, and I want you to watch this because this is how you master SEO. My website title is Toronto Photographer Steve Cardi. Editorial Portraits. Editorial Portraits is the title of my website. Toronto Photographer Steve Cardi. Title. Editorial Portraits is the title. Also, what else is in the title? Toronto headshots, advertising, cannabis photographer, fashion photography, portfolio, corporate headshots, actor headshots, streetwear, street style, photography, models, social content, videographer, director, content creator. That is the title of my website. So welcome. This welcome, Richard. This is the reason why when you type Toronto photographer editorial, welcome, I come up. It's because that's what my website is named. And also it's not just named that it's named Toronto photographer, Steve Cardi. It's named but gifted Toronto, member. Let's go calligraphy, keeping the train going with a gifted membership every episode. Calligraphy has been gifting a membership every episode for like three months. Calligraphy, thank you. I appreciate New it. New member. Damien, you just got gifted by calligraphy. Thank you, calligraphy. So this is the reason that my SEO is so mental and why I get jobs from people all over the world. It is because I'm searched Toronto social content photographer, Toronto videographer, Toronto content creator. It's in the title. It says Toronto three times. It says content creator. It says like, it says models. It says portfolio and it says editorial a couple of times. So naming. And again, by the way, the first little bit is all they see. So when you type in and you go to the start page and you click go to Steve Cardi photographer on the top, look, when you roll over the highlight, that box, Toronto photographer, Steve Cardi, you see all the things here that my website is actually called. Those are all the most common search terms that people search when they're looking for a photographer in my niche. So I put the most common search terms as the title of my website. So did that help you? I hope so. It, again, I'm saying that this far in the episode because the people who don't have the attention span, the people who are just like, they just want everything just handed to them. Those people don't even act on the information that they get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Most people need conversation a little bit it has to sink in a little bit more and that comes from long form content that comes from being in chat with people it comes from like asking questions and it comes from being a part of a community like photography is not an instant thing it's not a switch you don't buy a camera and instantly you become a photographer it's a lifelong journey so it's better if you have coaches like me mentors um like a community like i provide with my discord like it, it's super important for you to like 
understand that most of the information that you're going to learn from photography, um, you're going to have to do some work in order to get it, you know, and the work that you're doing right now is just watching and making notes. It's super simple. All right. So number 10 is infuse personality into your website. In a world saturated with content, your personality in coming out in your photography is super, super important. And in your website, your unique portfolio, your unique personality, they are intertwined. Your personality is your most powerful asset. Share your passion for your photography through using super simple language around your website and engaging storytelling. And also your website becomes a platform for that artistic expression, for those personal connections and understand you're, you got to make your visitors feel smart. So design your website in such a way that's going to make your visitors feel smart and feel like smart for finding you. You know, so you can do that not by trying to be all crazy with your design and your layouts, but simply by like just being easy with your language. Don't try to be smarter than now. Don't try to be holier than now. Just be real with your photography and everything will work out beautifully. You can infuse, you can infuse personality into your photos for sure. Lado Alexi, I think he really does it well, and he infuses that personality in his website as well. Oh, that's the end of that story. All right, that's Lado Alexi, one of my favorites. All right, let's get into um, Danielson Photo. This is another really great, great exercise for infusing personality into your photography. Look at Arlid. R. Ild Danielson. Welcome, Deep State. Thanks for subbing. So let's look at his people in editorial and look at look at this absolutely sick website. So, so great. Like the rollover, the way the names come up on the rollover. Click any picture. Hit the Unfortunately, he doesn't give us um, arrows front back or any way to nav front and back from this, but there seems to be so many photos in here, but I do love the way that he's incorporated his personality into this. It's kind of dope. Let's get into one more category. People in editorial, let's look at advertising very fast loading super cool you can see the lifestyle angle and i've talked about lifestyle so often lately you can see how important lifestyle photography is when it comes to shooting advertising you can see so much of his advertising is actually lifestyle so much of his advertising is actually lifestyle and you got to realize mastering lifestyle is actually you're about to make a million dollars shooting advertising you know but again it's that's another topic <laughs> so infuse personality into your website really even with the language how you talk about yourself you talk about your photography don't write it like Stephen Cardi is a really cool photographer it's like no no write it like I'm Cardi. I shoot like right first person. The worst type of writing is you writing about yourself in the second person, in the third person, like about yourself, like not writing like, hi, I'm Claire. I'm a photographer from Pennsylvania. Like not writing in your own voice, but writing like Claire is a photographer from Pennsylvania. Like, right from your own voice. For me, I had someone write about me, which is, it's different. Like I had my creative consultants write, they did an entire book on me. So my bio is um, from here, which is the Cardi Bible, <laughs> which is like my brand book. I have a 500 page brand guide to keep me on track. So they also invite invented the dot matrix logo and all of that stuff. So 
Yes, infuse personality into your website. When you go to my um, bio or about page, um, it's almost like my, my like, Cardi has a modest and straight up, under, Cardi has a modest and straight up approach to making pictures that is understated, modern, and honest. Reflecting the attitude of the moment, he creates powerful undertones, which are never overstylized, but always iconic. At his best, he's a photographer who connects with his subjects quickly and produces quickly. A relationship founded first in moments, finding that essential common ground and comfort. From them, he's able to capture remarkably personable and raw moments of beauty and depth of truth. It's a straight up human approach underpinned with confidence by the artist's sound technical ability. Like that's a writer writing about me. Like, so my bio is different than a typical bio, but if you're new to the craft, write in your own voice. Don't write in the second person. And for me, at the, at the, at the point where I was like 25 years in the game, I started with having coaches and mentors and they took me to the next level and they started writing about my photography. So I use those. All right. I hope that helps. Next quality over quantity, quality over quantity, quality over quantity. When it comes to showcasing your photography, quality reigns supreme. Curate your work thoroughly thoughtfully focusing on presenting only your best and most impactful images avoid oversaturating avoid overwhelming your audience with excessive number of galleries and images present only your best and most impactful images select carefully curated collections that leave a lasting impression on your visitors. Each photograph represents your artistic vision and brand identity. So choose wisely. Like you can't show everything. You just can't. Everything isn't at the level that, and also you have to prove that you're an editor. You have to prove that you can curate a beautiful collection of photographs that will hold people's attention. You do not need to show everything that you've ever done. Curate a beautiful collection that represents what you do at the highest level. Look at Chloe Crespi's curations. It's so simple. And she shows just enough work, but not too much. Curate and God forbid, edit. And I'm saying that because I need to do it myself. Edit, 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 edit. Quality over quantity. Next, number 12, maintain freshness and consistency. Consistency is key when it comes to building a loyal audience. Regularly updating your website, regularly switching up the templates, switching up the formatting. If it's not working, it's a, your website's a constant evolution. Where there's new pictures, adding blog posts or other, adding video, adding gifts to your homepage, by consistently delivering valuable and exciting content, you keep your audience coming back for more. Additionally, maintaining a consistent style and tone across your website reinforces your photography style, your brand identity, and creates a cohesive experience for your viewers. Like your style, your photography style, how you see with the camera, there's no other way to like showcase that than on your website. And what a beautiful way to show the best of that than maintaining like the freshest, newest stuff up at the top. So people who come back to your website regularly will see, oh my God, Cardi updated. Let's see what he's got to offer. All right, mobile friendly design. This is number 13. 
if I look at my stats, more than half of the people who look at my website, where's my phone? More than half of the people who look at my website, look at it on their phone. Like people aren't looking at your site always on an optimum scenario. So what does your website look like on mobile? Here's mine. When you are on my website, you actually can save my website to your home screen. So you see that little Cardi C? You can save so my website actually becomes an app. So you load it and there's my site, the, the mobile version of it at least. And it navs super simply, super easy. I have my hamburger menu up at the top which opens and shows you the exposure's a bit hot, so you can't see it. My exposure doesn't adjust, but my galleries are here and it's super easy to navigate my website. Here's how I can show you actually, because if you go to any website, in order to see what the mobile version is, all you need to do is take that website and scale it to the point where it becomes a mobile site. And my site becomes a mobile site right there. You see, once I go here, now that's the mobile site. And if I keep scrolling, that shows you pretty much exactly what the mobile site looks like. You click this hamburger menu and here's my menu. And when you expand this just a little bit further, this disappears and it becomes back to my regular website. So every site has a mobile version if you want to see how optimized your website is just go to your website and do this and see how quickly it changes from uh a mobile site where everything is now stacked oops i can go right to that level here where everything actually stacks let me do, let me do a little refresh here now yeah, there's actually, I can't make it small enough because if I go one step smaller, it actually goes to where pictures are one on top of each other. But it, Safari won't let me go that small. All right, guys, this is just a demonstration. All right, so embracing mobile-friendly design. Know that your website has to adapt to different screen sizes. People look at your website on an iPad, people look at a phone, the phones are different resolutions, people look at it on a laptop, people look at it on big 4K screens. Make sure that your website's responsive, which I showed you earlier, meaning any scale, it fills the size. And make sure that it's a delightful experience on smartphones and tablets because mobile traffic is over half of my traffic. So making sure that your mobile friendly, your website's mobile friendly, and also that your fonts and, and text is big enough so you can actually read it when it's this size. I mean, I have to hold mine at an angle. At an angle, you can see it. When I'm straight on, you can't. But yeah, um, make sure that your fonts are big so you can actually read them. Um, it's, it's important because if you're making it like you like small fonts, cool, but not everybody likes small fonts. So you got to make it good. All right. So it's um, and also having a good mobile friendly site means that people will stay on your mobile site longer. And that means they'll also that ranks you better on your on your um, SEO. All right. So number 14, we are coming to the end of this list of 15. Embrace social media, but not just social media, social networking. I know there was a movie back in the day called The Social Network. The whole idea was that you actually have to use Instagram and LinkedIn to find clients. Social media is powerful for expanding your reach and connecting you with a global audience. If you have a niche, it becomes incredibly easy to follow accounts that could use your services. Imagine you love shooting coffee. You have a whole business and portfolio where you shoot coffee, like my past assistant, Rohan. So Ro, let's just search up Ro. Rohan Agalawate. Here he is. Oops, that's not it. Um, how come I can't find Ro? And how come it's not... 
Oh, I guess it's just Ro Egloate he goes by. There it is. He doesn't go by Rohan anymore. Only I know him as Ro, and it's roagalwate.com. So Ro loves coffee, and he started this whole thing where he was shooting um, coffee and doing things like this and things like this and things like this and this and making all this incredible food and beverage and specifically coffee. So if you have a portfolio that looks like this, you understand exactly who you could go to to ask, like Pilot Coffee Roasters, which is exactly what Rohan did. He started making this work and then now he's doing huge campaigns for Rohan, I mean for Pilot Coffee because, oh my goodness, stop with the security codes we'll do that another time so rohan actually started getting coffee clients coffee brands coffee shops hiring him to shoot coffee because he does it so well as well as tea and so much so that pilot coffee hired him on like full time because they want to just they want him to do everything so he makes a ton of money shooting specifically their coffee stuff so Social networking is how he found them and how they found him. It's a powerful tool for expanding your reach and connecting with a global audience. Know that when you actively engage with social media, meaning follow photo editors, follow art directors, follow designers, art like people who have the potential to hire you. Let's go, Menchi. Welcome. Share the work interact with people and collaborate with fellow creatives social media is is absolutely the worst thing on earth but only if you're you've curated it improperly if you're not following other photographers that inspire start following other inspire. if you have your feed and you're looking you don't care about any of the stuff that you're looking at unfollow 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 like you can curate your feed to be a beautiful digital garden of inspiration and beautiful photography that motivates you to get up and do something and work or you can curate your feed that's just all like hot models and girls tweaking twerking and like bikini girls and like low frequency low energy stuff that doesn't cause you to do anything except doom scroll you know so like what you're so if you if you hate social media and your social media is bad and you hate instagram it's just because you haven't spent the time to curate following the right people i'm on instagram <laughs> you could follow me you know so all right so in the last point the last point is harnessing the power of email marketing earlier on i was showing you rankin's website and like a pop-up said join my mailing list what a mailing list does is it gives you accountability and it, it helps you with consistency and the reason that i use substack is because substack is not just blogging it's a mailing list and that's why it makes it so powerful it's my mailing list like i actually own all 1000 emails of people who chose to join my list that i can take to any platform so and there's no limit and substack by the way is free it's free it's a free platform like mailchimp and all of these other like mailing list managers cost money depending on how your list grows you have a million people on this list and it's free and also you can monetize substack so i can monetize meaning what i do is after seven days all my posts go behind a paywall so you have to pay in order to see and i have a year of amazing content that people want to see i have something that's valuable people want access to it they'll pay the five bucks a month to access it so all that comes from having an email list that you can market to now if i put a book out who do you think i'm going to tell first except for that email list is like hey i have a book and also my youtube channel which is also an incredibly powerful email list it's just that it's done in form of videos instead of being in the form of like an email in your inbox so email marketing it's a personal and direct way to connect with your audience 
Use it to deliver valuable content, share updates, and promote your photography services or products. Hey, I'm offering a sale, free headshots for the next 24 hours. If you get back to me in the next 24 hours, I will give you a free headshot. Like, oh my God, like if you use your mailing list for that, that's a whip, it's a wicked way to use it. By nurturing a dedicated email subscriber base, you create a loyal community that eagerly anticipates your announcements and offers. Just think of Supreme and Supreme and those drops. Like you were on a list and you would learn, oh my God, Supreme's dropping a new, like, and you would be there lined up with all the other hype beast kids that are like dying to have the latest greatest. They would find out about that because they joined an email list. Email is so powerful. When you regularly provide value through these emails, your readers will turn into loyal clients and enthusiastic supporters. And by the way, I grew my list from eight people and added over a thousand in less than 12 months. And I use my, my, I use my newsletter to grow my YouTube channel and I use my YouTube channel to grow my newsletter. Like one hand washes the other, like it's super simple. So. Guys, that is 15 things that you could be doing in order to make your website rock. Like your website's never finished, but how many people I see who are in my mentorship program, who watch my channel, who are like, hey, here's my new version, here's my website. And I look at it and I'm just like, oh my God, it's so bad. It's, it's so bad on a level like, oh my God. You know, I just want to rapid fire just a few, like look at what industry standard looks like. This is Scott Cicino from Tin House Studio. This is Scott's website. Look how Scott is using GIFs. Look how he's using motion and movement within his thumbnails in order to like grab even more attention when you're just scrolling his pictures. The movement makes this homepage just so dynamic. So again, it's like, unfortunately, so many, and it, like I showed you Zig Zian and, and this website and how absolutely clean and beautiful the photography, how on brand and on point this work is. And by the way, they're all self portraits. Absolutely incredible. Like there's so many. Jay Maisel, Jay Maisel has a, Jay Maisel is such a prolific photographer. He's in his seventies, like no photos on the homepage. You actually have to go into Okay, standing walking, number one. And then you read his artist statement on what this whole work, body of work is about. And then you w look at standing walking. Like all of these are his personal self-directed projects. Like that's what makes it so amazing. All of these are self-directed projects. Like one of my favorite is trees. He loves shooting trees. Look at how long this goes on for. They're all self-directed projects. Trees, I photographed the earth from the air. The only thing that looked like it belonged there are the trees. And just trees. Now, it's all self-directed projects and it's done so simply and so beautifully. Bab's website backgrounds are always black, white, or gray. Black, white, or gray. There's an industry standard of using the arrows to go forward and back. And there's an industry standard of hitting the escape key to get back to where you were before. So, this is Jay Maisel and everything organized into self-directed projects. So many different ways that you can approach photography, but you can see it's just a photo and a simple forward back. It's the most important part. Ha, uh, guys, I hope today brought you value. 
Um, I see too many photographers' websites. I see too many newer photographers' websites. Just bad. And there has to be a starting point. Um, when you're joining Adobe Portfolio, there's templates. You can search templates. You can see what other people are doing. Um, it's super easy. If you're going on Adobe Portfolio, my suggestion would be search templates. You just go to my portfolio. Um, I'm gonna just do a little edit site on one of my tester websites here. And then you can say themes. Welcome. Hey, welcome Black Dagger. You say themes and you just look at these themes that they see. The theme that I use is um, Matthias, which is right here. This is my theme. So, um, but Thomas, all of these themes, you then further customize. But it, it's super easy. Every theme you have to customize. They're never going to be absolutely perfect. And it takes some time and knowledge to get into the headspace where your website is looking exactly how you want it to look with the right rollovers. And um, yeah, it takes some time. The right fonts and the right sizes. It takes time to get it looking exactly how you want. But it's definitely worth the effort. I'm about to spend some time um, doing this. Guys, I know you're asking me about the masterclass. The masterclass is starting incredibly soon, like within the week. I'm gonna be doing a test for the masterclass actually very soon, possibly even later on today. You sent me an email asking to be a part of the masterclass test group. I'm gonna send you an email with some links um, and a time to jump on. It's gonna happen very soon because this masterclass is going to be basically once per month. It's gonna be a two hour talk where every month we have a single topic that we're talking about and everybody is going to be on camera. Everybody is going to be chatting. It is going to be a paid thing, but it's going to be a private thing, meaning only masterclass members are gonna get access to what we're talking about and only masterclass members are gonna be able to watch them afterwards. So masterclass, um, is starting and also I am building an entire education program that is something that I've been <laughs> secretly working on in the background um, because there are some courses that I'd like to build there are some things that I get asked and go over and over and over again through my mentorships and go over and over and over again when I'm doing portfolio reviews for people so there's just some templates and some courses I want to build um, and make that available for you Lastly, um, joining this channel, we are now at 222 members. Um, joining this channel makes it so you have access to all my live stream chats. Behind the picture is the only time you can chat with me live if you're a subscriber. Um, members only chat happens Tuesdays and Thursdays and Tuesdays and Thursdays are when I review photos and also am super interactive with the chat and talking back and forth and answering your questions. Guys, I hope today brought you value. Um, this is the last episode of Behind the Picture of the Season. This is episode 20. As of next week, we start season six with the Photo of the Year Awards. The Photo of the Year Awards, if you've submitted, the cutoff for the Photo of the Year Awards was December 31st because they had to be shot in the calendar year of 2023. Then I have your photos and I am looking at them and putting together a nice episode for you on Sunday. We will be looking at the Photo of the Year Awards. I will be awarding Photos of the Year in several categories and um possibly also most improved photographer if i see some of y'all that making some great improvements maybe there'll be a most improved category guys thank you so much for watching i will see you on tuesday for another episode of ask a photo pro um, my mentorship is closed currently because i am full but i have literally seven people who emailed me to say I want to be a part of the wait list. If you are currently in my mentorship program and not taking advantage of it fully, know that uh, I, I move people, I bump people. If you're not progressing, if you're not doing the work that you should be doing, if you're not acting on all the stuff that we talk about in these mentorships, then it just ends up being, you're paying me a whole whack of money just to talk to me for two hours. 
It's not a good use of my time. And I'd really, I want to see people progress. So mm, use the mentorship if you're in it, um, utilize it because I have lots of people who are on the outside dying to get in and I only have a limited amount of time, which is why the master class is going to be a bridge for people who want one-on-one -on -one help but aren't quite, can't afford it or who want one-on-one -on -one help but one-on-one -on -one help isn't available yet because I'm full. So that's why the masterclass is coming in. It alleviates some, alleviate some time for me because I can do it once per month instead of the currently 20 hours that I do of mentorships per month, 20 hours. So that is why I can't take on more people because then it would be 30 hours, then it would be 40 hours. And then it is a full-time job, me mentoring photographers and not working for myself. It spreads me too thin. So I constantly rotate the people who I have in and I'm going to also have a limit on how long people can be in my mentorship program for. I'm gonna have a limit. I'm not sure what that limit's going to be. I'm thinking it's going to be between three and six months. There's going to be a cutoff point, meaning um, after six months, you'll have to reapply again so I can let some more people come in. Cool. Um, and again, if, <laughs> if it's not going, three months is usually how long it takes for you to be get to get going three months three cycles meaning six hours with me Welcome. sometimes people need uh four months five months I'm starting to go on to six months now now you're using me more for accountability which i appreciate but um i feel like those people i'd rather roll back into my master into my master class so it's a group setting so i can bring in more people and help them one-on-one -on -one. So it's going to be a six month kind of a three to six month thing. Guys, I hope this brought you value. I love you very much. It's Sunday. Call your mom. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please, by the way, leave a comment as to what time zone you're in. Meaning I want to know what city you're in and what GMT you are in. I am GMT minus four, I believe. GMT minus four, GMT minus five. I'm meaning I am in Eastern Standard Time. I'd like to know what time zone you're in. If I know what time zone you're in, then I can really target the right time zone to do this masterclass. I'm really having a hard time figuring out what time zone to do it. Lastly, if you became a member of this channel, that is why you have commercial free content is because of the names that are scrolling across this top right now. Unfortunately, I can only show 25, but um, the 220 odd people who are members of this channel are the reason that I'm able to do these live streams absolutely commercial free. You'll notice there wasn't a single commercial, but if you are watching this after the fact, there was probably commercials because commercials get turned on as soon as the live stream is over as a way to keep this channel going. Guys, I love you. Thank you for your continued support. Make sure you're part of my Discord. The Discord is where we all go right now. Love you all.